to move into probability today. Probability, as you might know, is just the chance of something happening or how likely something is to happen. We talk often about sample space or the set of all possibilities that can occur as a result of an event. And the probability is calculated by taking the number of favorable outcomes over the total number of outcomes or, as we've already talked about, that being the sample space. Let's actually calculate the sample space of an event. So the event in question is the flipping of three coins and I want to draw the sample space for that event happening. So to do that, I take and I list, first of all, what's going to be occurring. I'm going to take and with my first coin, it's going to have a head or a tail. So I have two possible outcomes on that first coin. Now, with the second coin, we add on some other possibilities. The second coin off this head could be a head and a tail. And off this tail could be a head and a tail. And then likewise on the third coin, I could have a head and a tail off either previous flip. So now if I want to draw my sample space, I have all my possibilities listed before me. And what I do is I follow the branches of these trees that I've made. So I could have three heads. That's one possible outcome. Two heads and a tail. I could have another two heads and a tail. I could have a head and two tails. And when we do this, we're talking about possibly having distinguishable coins. Then in this case, I could have, once again, two heads and a tail, two tails and a head. Once again, two tails and a head. and three tails. So we've got a total of eight different outcomes which makes sense because in our counting principle we have three coins each of which with two possibilities so that's two times two times two different outcomes or eight different outcomes. But right here is our actual sample space, the actual things that occur. Now let's calculate some simple probabilities to start with and then we'll move on to some tougher examples. So if we've got five pencils, four pens in a bag, we want to know the probability of reaching into that bag and drawing out a pen. Well, this is pretty straightforward. This is a middle school example almost. We have four likely outcomes over nine total outcomes, and that's our probability. I'm going to give you most of these, unless they're really ugly, in fractions. Uh, you can also calculate them in decimals. Next, we jump into more of a combinations type of question. We have six men, three women, and a committee. Subcommittee of two is chosen. We want to know the probability of the subcommittee being made up of two women. So we need, once again, the likelihood of two women being drawn over the total number of drawing two people. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the possibility of two women being drawn. And to ensure that the women are being drawn, we have to pick from the group of women. So we're going to take three, choose two. And that's going to be the probability or the likelihood of drawing two women over nine, choose two, which is all the possible outcomes that can occur. We can plug this into our calculator to get an answer. This gives us 3 over 36, or a 1 12th probability. We get three animals chosen from four lions, six tigers, and three bears, and we want the probability that one of each animal is chosen. So we've got to, first of all, find out how many ways we can choose one of each animal. 
Well, if I want one lion, I have to choose from the four to get one lion and ensure I get a lion. To get a tiger, I gotta choose one from six and a bear one from three. So this is the total number of ways I can get one animal being chosen from each group over the total number of choices of three animals from this larger group, which is 13 choose three. You can pop that into your calculator and get an answer. I'm just going to leave the skeleton of the problem right here as your answer. Next, we move into a different type of problem that deal with dice, and we want to know what's the probability of rolling a seven. What I do with my dice problem is I kind of look at my entire sample space right before us. I've got possibilities of dice being thrown of uh, 36, and what I'm assuming is that I can distinguish between one dice and another. So pretend like I've got a red dice and a blue dice. So one through six on one dice is different from one through six on another. And we want the possibility of rolling a seven. Well, what I do is I mark all the possible combinations that will give me seven. So I have six and one, five and two, four and three, three and four, two and five, six and one. And since I've outlined, I have a total of six possibilities then I have six out of 36 ways to roll that seven, or a one-sixth probability. Next, we're going to find the probability of rolling at least one two on a die, which means I could roll two twos, but we want to find the probability of rolling at least one. So again, I'm going to mark my possible rolls. This roll has a two, this roll has a two, this roll has a two, and so on and so forth. And then with the other die being a two, I could have this roll, this roll, et cetera, et cetera. So I count all these up. Looks like we've got a total of 11, over 36 ways to get that done. I would recommend for all dice problems, setting up a chart like this and marking off your possibilities. Another typical type of probability problem deals with decks of cards. These days, a lot of people don't play with cards, so what I've got for you is all the possible outcomes from a deck of cards. You've got four different suits, of which we have two different colors, and then there's an ace, four of each of those, two through ten, four of each of those, and then jack, queen, king, or face cards, and there's four of each of those. Become familiar with this diagram here because you'll be responsible to know all the possible outcomes in a deck of cards. And there's 52 cards in that deck. No jokers for those of you who play cards. So what we're going to do now is we're going to find the probability from a standard deck of playing cards of drawing five cards such that there's four cards from one suit. And since we're drawing five cards, that implies that there's a fifth card from a different suit. This problem might seem simple, but it's really kind of difficult. What we want to do is we want to look at all the different groups of things that can happen. The first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find out how you choose suits. So let's list that. Then the next thing we're going to have to do is figure out how you're going to choose those four cards from that one suit. Then we're going to figure out what are the number of ways we can choose the cards from the second suit. So, again, it asks, what's the probability of drawing five cards such that there's four from one suit? Well, that means that in total, I'm picking two suits. So what I have, since there's four different suits, I'm going to choose two of them. Once I pick my two suits, I need to take and select four cards from one suit. 
Well, we know there's 13 cards in every suit. And I'm choosing four cards from that suit. Once I've selected that suit, there's only one suit remaining. And in that suit, I have 13 cards from which I'm choosing one. Multiplying all these together give me the total possibility of probable outcomes. And then what I need to do is put that over the total number of outcomes of picking five cards from a deck of cards. So that's 52, choose five. This is going to be an astronomical number. Um, but you can plug that into your calculator and, and get that answer. This next problem is not quite as difficult. They ask you to pick from a standard deck of 52, four cards, and the probability that all those cards are red. Well, again, if you look at our diagram, you want to look at how many cards are red. We've got 52 total cards, and half of them are actually red. So if we take and choose four of those, that means we're taking from 26 red cards and choosing four. Total number of four card choices from a 52 card deck is 52, choose four, and there's my probability. Probability is going to take a little bit of work to get used to. Make sure you're checking your answers as you're going through the classwork. And uh, we'll continue to review this for a couple more days. Take care.